Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video, let's carry on with what we were learning in the previous video about CSS. So let's get this started. Alright, so in the previous video, we've already seen some of the basic styling properties that you can apply for a HTML file. And in this video, let's carry on with that and let's add some more properties to it. Okay, so now instead of actually applying the properties to the whole website, let's again select the H1. That is the main heading, right? So let's select the H1. So let's remove this from here and only have one heading here. Then let's use the class. So you have to use dot, then give the class name. Then initiate the curly braces. Now inside this, you can type in any property that you want. So let's say I want to increase the size of this particular heading. And the way that I can do that is by typing in font hyphen size. Then click on tab and then you'll have the font size. And for this as well, you can use the English words to actually define the property. But it's not preferred to do so. Instead, you have to give the numerical value for it. So in this case, I can type in like, let's say 150 px that represents pixels. All right. So this px or pixels is the basic unit of representation inside any website, right? So if I make this whole screen, as you can see here, the text is really large. And that is because the text is actually of 150 pixels in size. So pixel is a basic unit of measurement in this case. So apart from pixels, you can apply some other types of values as well. You can give it as percentages. So I can type in 10% and that's going to give me the 10% equivalent of the heading. And right now the heading is so small that you can't actually see the heading. So let me change that to 100% once again. And if I save that, you'll have the 100% of the heading. And if I give it as let's say 200%, then that's going to give me the 200% of the heading. So now apart from this pixels and percentages, you can apply EM or REM. So both of these can also be used as a unit of measurement inside our website. And one thing that we keep in mind is that an EM or REM is equivalent to 16 pixels. That means one EM is equal to 16 pixels. So it's not just EM, REM is also equivalent to 16 pixels. So by that, what I mean is that like, let's say if I give it as one EM, and if I save that, so that's going to give me 16 pixels of unit. So if I change it to, let's say 16 pixels, and if I save that, you can see there's no difference, right? So one EM represents 16 pixels. So I can type in one EM, and if I save that, you'll have it, or I can type in one REM, and that's going to have the same output. So the main difference between EM and REM is that if you give the property as EM, then whenever the screen size changes, then the size of the font will change according to this parent tag. And in this case, the parent tag for the main heading is body because right now this heading is present inside the body, right? So this body is the parent tag and H1 is the child tag. So whenever the size of the body decreases, the size of the main heading also decreases. And if the size of the body increases, the same thing will happen for the heading. But if you give it as REM, then irrespective of whether the body size increases or decreases, the main heading will remain same and it will only change based on the size of the screen. All right. So if the size of the screen changes from a laptop to a mobile screen, automatically it will scale down and vice versa will be applied when it changes from a small device to a larger screen. All right. So remember that if you want to make it mobile compatible, it is best to use REM. And if you want to hard code something, then you can use EM. Okay. So in this particular case, EM and pixels are hard coded. So pixels and EM are hard coded, whereas REM and percentages are dynamic and they change based on the device size or the size of the property, right? So both of these will automatically scale up or down. So it is better to use REM or percentages if you can. Okay. And I prefer using REMs in most of my styling properties. So it's better. You can stick with these and that will be good. So for now, let's give the size to be 5 REM and that's going to give me 5 REM or it's too big. Let's give it as let's say 3 or 2 REM. Okay, that's fine. So now apart from this, we can also apply some other properties. Now inside the main heading, let's add an alignment property to it. So right now by default, the text is aligned to the left, right? So let's say I want to align it to the center. Then I can type in text hyphen align. So that is a property. And inside of that property, I can give in, let's say center. And if I save that automatically, the text will be aligned to the center. If I give it as left, it will be aligned to the left. And if I give it as right, it will be aligned to the right. So apart from this text alignment, you can also change the width of the element. So let's actually go back to the browser once again. And in here, let's right click and click on inspect. Now, once I do that, a dialog box will open showing the code of our website. So let me zoom in a bit. 
All right. So this is the code of our website. So these are developer tools which are available in any browser. So you can open your browser and right click in that and you'll see this tools. All right. So now let's go to the heading, right? If I hover over these elements, as you can see, you are able to see the element, right? So now if I hover over the H1, as you can see, the element is stretching from left to right. So let's not worry about the yellow color that we have top and bottom. But for now, just look at the size. So it has been stretched from left to right. Now, if I want to change the width, what I can do is that I can type in width. And let's say I'm going to give it as one rem and end it with a semicolon and save that. Then the size decreases. And if I go back here, as you can see, the width is really less, right? So the width is really less and the text is overflowing out of that particular element width. So in this way, you can define whatever you want. Like, let's say instead of typing in rem, I can type in 10%. And if I save that, it's going to give me 10% the equivalent of the whole element width. So similarly, you can type in a border as well. So in order to type in the border, you have to type it out as border, then give a colon, and then you have to give in three things. The first one is the size of the border. So now let's say I'm going to type in as one pixel of width, and then you have to give the color. So I can type in a black color. So let me give it as hash six zeros. And one more thing here is that if you have a hex code which has repeating numbers and if all the six digits are repeated, then what you can do is that you can write it in a shorthand way and instead of typing it as six zeros, you can type it as three zeros. All right. And that's going to actually do the same exact thing. Now, once you're done with these two properties, the third thing that you have to give it as is whether it has to be solid or dotted or something like that. So let's say I'm going to type in as solid. And once I save that, a solid property or a border will be applied. If I change it to, let's say, dotted, then a dotted kind of border will be applied. So in this way, you can apply border. So now apart from applying the border, you can also change whether the corners have to be rounded or not, right? So below this, let's add in another property called as border hyphen radius. So I can type in that, then I have to give in a value. So let's say I'm going to give it as one rem, then end it off and save it then the border is going to curve at the edges. So this one rem is really large. So let's change that, give it as 0.5, that is half. Or you can give it as 0.2 as well. That's good enough, right? So apart from these things, what you can do is that you can also apply these properties to not just a single element, but instead you can group multiple elements into a single unit. Like let's say right now we have a heading and we have a paragraph. So let's say we want to apply a border to both of these and you want to consider them to be a single element. What you can do is that inside of HTML, we have a tag called as div, which represents a division. All right. So I can initiate that and I can cut both of these from here and paste it here. So now what you can do is that you can give a class name to this. So I'm going to give it as main div. Now let's remove the class for the H1 and let's save that. Let's go back to the styling part and below this, let's type in the styling for the main division. So now let's say I want to apply a border property to it. So I can type in border, give it as one pixel. It's going to be of color, let's say black, and it's going to be solid. If I save that, now as you can see, the border property has actually been applied to both the heading and the paragraph, and both of them have been linked and grouped together as a single element. If you use the inspector as well, in here, let's minimize this. Yeah, as you can see here, we have a main division. All right. So this division will act as a single entity. And instead of this, we have multiple elements. The first one is a heading. The second one is the paragraph. And one more thing that you need to observe here is that whenever I hover over these elements, as you can see, there's a yellow color property present on all of these elements. And that is the margin. All right. So in order to actually understand what margin is, we need to understand what is the box model. So if I go back to this page and as you can see here, let's select the division. Now inside this division, let's go to the right hand side and click on layout. So you will have the layout. So inside the layout, we have something called as a box model. So what this box model represents is that if I hover over this thing, this is the actual element. This is the width and this is the height. All right. Now this element has a border to it. So this is the border. Now there's a bit of space between the border and the element and that is the padding. All right. So now if you want to add some kind of space between the border and the element, then you have to use a padding. All right. So let's go back here and inside this division, let's add a bit of padding. So I can do that by typing in padding and let's say I'm going to give it as one rem and save that. As you can see here, the elements have shifted inside and there's a bit of space between the border and the elements present inside of it. And as you can see, a padding has been applied as well. That is one rem, which is equivalent to 16 pixels. 
and padding has been applied all around okay it has padding top at the bottom but also the right and the left if you want you can apply all of that at the same time or you can apply just a single thing like padding hyphen left and then only the padding left will be applied similarly let's say if you want to increase the distance between the border and the outside element okay like let's say i want to increase the space that i have here what i can do is that i can type in a margin so i can type in margin give a colon then i can type in one rem and if i save that the elements is going to shift inside and as you can see the size or the space has been increased as well so margin of 16 pixels or one rem has been added so this is the box model which represents every element present inside our html page so similar to the padding left you can also apply margin left right top or bottom and the same thing can be done for the border as well instead of typing it out for the whole four sides you can type it off border top and that's going to be applied only to the top and one more thing is that these properties will not just be applied to the division itself but to the elements present inside the division as well so like let's say if i want to align the text to the center and generally what we do is that we create a class for the particular element then apply the text align property but the main problem is that if you want to let's say apply the properties to all the elements present inside the div what you can do is that inside the main division class i can type in text align it's going to be text align and let's say it's going to be center i can type that out and if i save that as you can see the text has been aligned to the center and not just the heading but also the paragraphs so all the elements present inside the division will have been applied with the same properties that are defined for the main division class so in this way you can apply properties to all the elements present inside any division all right so that's why divisions are used to group elements into a single unit and those properties or the css properties will be applied to the whole division and that same thing can be seen inside the browser as well if i go to this division as you can see this whole division acts as a single unit and instead of that this heading is a single element in and itself and this paragraph is another single element all right so all of these are combined into a single division and that division is present inside the body so that's how elements are grouped together inside the html and that's how properties are applied as well so these are some of the basic properties that you need to know in order to stylize a html website and apart from these there are a lot more properties but i cannot cover all of these in a single video and it's not compulsory for you to know all of these properties before you get started with applying the css part to the html so this is a starting point for you so if you know these basic properties you can apply that and create a basic html website all right so before closing this off i just wanted to say that this video was made in collaboration with packet prep so packet prep is a training and placement company located in hyderabad and these videos were specifically made for the job guarantee training program that they have going on right now and that is the full stack java developer program so apart from these free video lectures they also have some premium content as well like lecture notes practice and test papers for you to get better at your core concepts and they also have offline as well as online classes for this program and they also conduct multiple demo sessions as well so you can attend any of these demo sessions and understand the things they are teaching as well as the training approach firsthand so if you're interested i provided the website link in the description down below you can go there and check them out so that's it for this video guys i hope you have liked what you've seen till now if you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.